In this video, we are going to give you a review of how this heat pump actually performed in cold weather. And we're gonna give you feedback on two nights. Now, this was for now one actual day that we recorded on this. It was a cold morning that I was physically present on site, able to record and give fir a first hand account. But the second account that I'm gonna give you is from the coldest night of the week. Now, I know for all our subscribers that have been waiting patiently for this video to come out and have asked for this review, sorry it's taken so long. I was actually, there was a perfect opportunity opportunity to record a super cold night cold weather you know heat pump video it was like literally the weekend I was out of town from that Thursday through that Monday and then I look at the 10-day forecast and I started seeing these you know negative 10 negative 15 and so that whole weekend we were getting lows that were I think the highest low that weekend was zero or maybe five I mean it was literally most of the nights were uh, negative 10 or negative 15 and so I wasn't in town to actually record and film that however my dog sitter who was in town and that's who we installed this heat pump for that is at her house she gave me a first-hand report of that so the first portion of this video that you guys are gonna watch now is going to be first-hand experience of how it was performing when it was negative nine I show kind of the run times I show the defrost cycle what it looks like when the system's been running I go to the indoor unit and the outdoor unit and kind of give you a rundown and then at the end of that video I'll actually come back and I'll have some feedback for how it performed on those super cold nights what and whether or not it kept up and what they found out about how it operates. And in addition, I'll have feedback on everything from comfort levels, how quiet it actually is and what their feedback was on how it performs. And in addition, what their bill looked like and because they've had the opportunity now to run it for about two and a half or three months since we've installed it. I have to double check the calendar. Time's kind of flown. So it might have actually been about three months, uh, but they have some feedback for me on what their bill has changed and how much it's cost to run the system. So we'll have all that on you and more shortly. So let's get started and we'll show you how this system kept up on that night degree morning. So we are here for an ACIQ cold weather test and it is nine degrees this morning and we are testing it. Now this is not the coldest night of the year that I had wanted to test it. Unfortunately I was actually out of town and we got the coldest snap. It was down to like negative 15 degrees Fahrenheit that weekend and so I'm trying to hopefully catch an, another cold night before the tail end. So hopefully if we get a single digit night or a negative night I'll come back and be able to capture that. But when I saw a single digit low on the forecast I wanted to take advantage of it and show some real world performance. Now at nine degrees Fahrenheit, this thing is technically because it's a cold climate heat pump in the way that it's rated at this temperature, it's still running at 100% capacity in order to qualify for the uh, cold climate heat pump tax credit that's part of the Inflation Reduction Act, you actually, the heat pump has to keep up to a minimum of 75% at five degrees Fahrenheit. And this keeps up, it's almost 100%, the temperature that we're at now. So it's rated for this, not struggling by any means, but in this video, we're gonna document how it keeps up, what you can expect, what's normal. It actually just finished a defrost cycle, which if you're not familiar with heat pump technology, defrost cycles are normal. It's when the systems actually reverse the flow of refrigerant and essentially function as an air conditioner. They do not blow cold air inside they actually shut the fan off inside but they reverse the flow of refrigerant and that defrosts any frost buildup on the condenser in the coil so if we get another defrost cycle here shortly I'll be able to show you that as that builds up. And we're also gonna give you a verdict basically of how this thing keeps up. Right now, this is normally set at 65 degrees inside, but today we have at 72 degrees Fahrenheit, so we're gonna see how it keeps up in cold weather with a higher set point to get some longer run times and show you what those defrost cycles look like and give you a verdict on whether or not it can actually keep up in cold weather. Now, as you can see, the heat pump behind me, uh, this is the indoor unit. This is running, obviously, the myth that uh, heat pumps don't keep up in cold weather. Couldn't be further from the truth. And one thing I forgot to mention is actually today with the wind chill, it's negative two degrees Fahrenheit. So it's actually very cold outside. But bottom line is this thing is, I wanted to give you that real world action so you could see it running, you could see it keeping up. This is definitely putting out heat right now. The temperature in the house is around 65 because that's what they just had it set at. And I cranked up the temperature at 72 just to keep this thing running to show you what defrost cycles look like and what it might look like in colder operation even though today it's it might be cold by our standards in terms of it's nine degrees Fahrenheit it's not cold for this heat pump meaning that it's not outside its operating range this thing is actually rated down to negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit and so it will start to taper off its capacity as it gets colder in order to qualify like I said for that tax credit earlier that I mentioned to be rated as a cold climate heat pump you technically only need a COP 1.75 at 5 degrees Fahrenheit and you only need to be able to maintain 75% capacity at 
five degrees Fahrenheit. So this definitely does that because we're still at 100% capacity in spite of how cold it is. And one, some of the things I do want to show you, and I'm going to take some videos to give you an idea, is that when a heat pump um, is running in the middle of the winter, it's not going to run in the same way that a furnace does in the sense of typically your furnace will kick on and then you might get long run times where it stays on for an hour, two hours, three hours. Because heat pumps have to go through a defrost cycle, this will shut off periodically and you might think that something is wrong. So for example, when I first showed up this morning and was getting set up, the outdoor unit, the fan was not spinning and it was making a humming noise and that's what a defrost cycle looks like what it's doing is it's basically reversing the flow of refrigerant so that the outside condenser heats up and the indoor coil if you look at the fins on the coil in here i took some video so you guys can see and i'll show you that in a second but what will happen is there is a slight amount of frost that will actually build up in here because while it's reversing the flow of refrigerant this essentially goes back to being an air conditioner and the outdoor unit goes to, back to being an air conditioner as well instead of a heat pump because it's reversing that flow and doing a defrost cycle and so you'll get a little bit of frost build up just ever so slight, it's not a ton on the indoor unit. If you live in a more humid climate, you might get more frost on the indoor unit while it's defrosting. And it's not on this area, it's specifically inside on the coil or on the fins. Um, and so you'll see that. So the outdoor unit is running right now. We're gonna show you uh, what that looks like when that defrost or when that frost starts to build up on the condenser. And then when it does go into a defrost cycle, like I said, this is going to be completely off because it's just going to be circulating refrigerant to thaw the outdoor unit. And then once that's done, the fan will kick back on and it'll start providing heat to your home again. Now, as far as what to expect in really cold climates or really cold temperatures, and this is going to vary widely and it's going to be dependent on the demands for heat inside as well as the outdoor temperature, how humid it is, how quickly it builds up frost on the outdoor unit. But typically you're going to see Run times anywhere between 30 minutes and an hour, in my experience, and this is gonna vary from heat pump to heat pump. And then you, you'll have anywhere between a five and a 15 minute defrost cycle, depending on how much deep frost has built up on the coil. You're gonna have longer defrost cycles when it gets colder out, unfortunately. And so that's where when it gets colder, you're gonna have a little bit longer defrost cycle just because it is so cold. And then you do have reduced capacity. So it will still keep up in, in cold climates. This is replacing a fireplace that was in here we had a, a fire wood burning stove which is still here as backup but this is their new wood stove so it definitely keeps up on the coldest nights and i'm actually going to have a report for you on how it did on that cold weekend this is not going to be me first hand filming because obviously i wasn't here like i said earlier but i'll be able to give you some feedback on how it actually kept up on those super cold nights but right now like I said, it's nine degrees outside and this is keeping up. Let's go outside, take a look at the frost buildup that I'm talking about so you can see what I mean when I talk about frost building up on the condenser when it's running in heating mode. Now we are outside right next to the condenser. As you can see a little bit, I have some close up footage for you, but basically the fins are very clean. They're actually not getting that much frost buildup or ice buildup. So the defrost cycles might be longer. This is probably in part to the fact that in Colorado, we have very low humidity. So out now, right now outside, the relative humidity is around like 15%. So it's very, very low, very dry. For reference, the Sahara Desert in the summer is like 22% relative humidity. So it's very dry in a lot of these like tundra cold climates the snow really believe it or not you know the coldness pulls a lot of moisture out of the air and makes it very dry so bottom line is you're not seeing a lot of frost build up on this right now at, at this temperature and it's been running maybe for about 10 minutes since the last defrost cycle finished when i first showed up the defrost cycle was running and just kind of finished and show you a close-up there's like a little a few sections where there's a very very small amount of ice that you might even not be able to see with the camera but a uh, bottom line is that you should get pretty long run times out of it in between your defrost cycles based on what I'm seeing in real world, world action on a cold day. Now, one of the things you'll notice, this system has been running now for about 40, 45 minutes. The frost is barely kind of building up on the outside. So that's just an indication that because the humidity is low, we're not gonna get, it's a good thing, we're not getting a lot of frost build up on a colder night or if it starts snowing or something and there's more moisture in the air, it might build up frost quicker. So just keep in mind that defrost cycles are normal. It's a normal part of heat pump operation. And what it does is the problem is, as you can see, and I'll show you some close-ups of this, but basically the frost 
starts to build up a layer on the outside of these fins and then because air can't make it across the fins basically to absorb heat from the outside that's when the fan shuts off the indoor fan shuts off and it reverses the circulation of refrigerant basically to air conditioning mode which then puts hot refrigerant through, and I'm using layman's terms, I'm not trying to get super technical, I'm just trying to explain how it works for someone that's not familiar with heat pump technology. And it sends that hot refrigerant through the, the coil outside, and then all of this frost actually melts off, and that's why you have these little ports at the bottom to where the water or ice will be able to drip off, and then ultimately fall off and i'll show you underneath you can see there's kind of a little puddle of ice is just from the heat pump when it's dropping its ice and, and going through these defrost like it hasn't hit one yet since we've had it cranked up to 72 so the bottom line is that in cold weather five degrees ten degrees zero degrees i have no doubts that this thing can keep up and when i get back to the office i'll actually give you a report firsthand from what i heard from the homeowner during the last cold snap that we had like i said when i was out of town and it was getting down to negative 15 and we'll give you the feedback on how that worked and how that kept up. So as you can see in the video that we just showed you at nine degrees Fahrenheit, the system actually kept up pretty well. The defrost cycles were very long. So it didn't even go into a defrost. It was in a defrost cycle when I first showed up in the morning. But after that, it didn't go through a defrost cycle the 45 minutes or so that I was on site. Frost started to build up a little bit there at the end. But long story short is if you're having those, and that was on a nine degree morning. So that's still pretty cold. The feedback as far as how it performed on when it was negative 17, uh, was the coldest that she reported on uh, her uh, thermometer that she keeps that tells her you know what the temperatures are outside in her specific she's on a cold windy hill on the top so she's a few houses up from us but basically when it was negative 17 uh, the system still kept up now they ran the system at 62 degrees as kind of their standard because this is in their basement it replaced their fireplace and so the purpose of it is to take the sting off of the basement and keep it warm and give them nice even heating so that way they don't have to worry about a freezing cold basement or a super hot basement because one of their complaints that they had from having in addition to having to feed the stove when they had the wood stove is that the room that that wood stove was in when they first turned it on and it was cranking that room could be 80 degrees plus I mean it was really warm down there and so people when they would come and visit they wouldn't want to stay in that first floor room because it was so hot and so that was some of the, some of the feedback is that it's a much more even heat down there on the cold nights they actually turned up the temperature so they set it at 65 on those really cold nights and the long story short verdict is that it worked and it kept kept up um, and it maintained that temperature that entire five day stretch of very cold weather that we had in Denver, which again, this installation was actually in conifer. So it's at much higher elevation at about 8,000 feet, which is about 45 minutes outside of the Denver metro area. Uh, but the long story short is it kept up. It kept up very well and it performed well. And in addition to that, we have some feedback on after having ran it for about two and a half, three months now, what their bills look like. Now, in case you're, you know, some of the comments when people comment, on cold weather and heat pumps and they talk about how inefficient it is and don't get a heat pump in a cold climate because it's just not going to keep up and it's going to be very inefficient. Their bill has gone up an average of on the two coldest months that we've had so far. The first month that it ran for two weeks, their bill did not even change. So they said on a year over year basis, it went up and they were kind of joking, it went up 50 cents. But that's literally, that was the only difference on a year over year basis from the prior year. But in the colder months, their electricity consumption, these two super cold months went up 50 $50 from what they were spending before. So $50 in electricity, that's at about a 14 cent kilowatt hour rate. But bottom line is that's not bad. And they were pretty happy with that was the general feedback I got because they're not having to go downstairs to feed the fire like they used to have to, especially on those cold nights. So it's much lower, basically no maintenance. You have to clean out the filter basically once a year at the start of the season, or maybe twice a year, but they have a pretty clean house. So they probably won't have to clean out the filter that often. But the bottom line is that this has been very efficient and cost effective for them to run and this remember system is the two ton model so this is the the largest of the cold climate systems and it's still at that size it's only was pulling or was only increasing their bill fifty dollars so not bad in my opinion um and it wasn't bad in in their opinion as well they were pretty happy with that so in summary you know we put this system to the test we really did kind of see how it performed in cold weather bottom line is it definitely keeps up so it definitely is worthy being installed in a cold climate. It's really going to depend on what your definition of a cold climate is or what that looks like. Because again, this system will keep up down to negative 22 degrees 
Fahrenheit is what it's rated for. It hasn't seen negative 22 Fahrenheit since we installed it. So the coldest nights it's seen was that weekend I told you about where it was negative 17. And during that weekend, it kept up. Now, if it stays, if you're in a climate where it gets down to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, for example, which is actually negative 40 Celsius too. So that's where they meet on the scale. I don't know that I would put something like this in if it's staying like that for three months out of the year, but that's pretty far north. So in most climates, like if you look at Minnesota, Northern Wisconsin, any of these places, if you look at the average temperatures in your area, I normally, you can go online and just look up average temperatures for, and then whatever area, and it'll tell you what the average lows are by month and the average highs are by month. And even in parts of Wisconsin, I was seeing average lows in around five degrees Fahrenheit. And so that means, sure, Wisconsin is definitely colder than Denver because Denver Metro, the average lows were are in January are at 21 degrees Fahrenheit. Highs are at 42 degrees Fahrenheit was the average high for Denver Metro. And again, we have nights that are colder than that and we have you know nights that are warmer than that but in general during our coldest month that's where we're at and so even in a cold climate if your average is at five degrees fahrenheit this heat pump would definitely keep up like i said if you're in arctic condition where you're talking negative 40 degrees fahrenheit or you know this is what, as you start to get above the arctic circle i think it's really really cold you know i'm not going to try and tell you to put in this heat pump because i don't think this system would be you know what's best for you you're really going to be looking at some sort of geothermal option probably if you're you're really wanting to put in a heat pump, which is not a bad option, especially if you're off grid because geothermal can keep up in those types of conditions because the ground temperature is not as affected by that. That is something to consider, but is for basically most of America, this heat pump will keep up for both heating and cooling. We didn't get a chance to test it in cooling, but they're probably not going to test it in cooling because of the application. They don't really run AC. They're uh, mountain people. And so they're the type to kind of open up their windows at night. So they're probably not really going to use it for air conditioning. But the fact that it can keep up in heating in those extreme temperatures gives me confidence that this system would work. And that's kind of my thoughts in summary. So we hope you found this content helpful. Thank you guys for your patience. And we really appreciate, I know it took several months to get this video out, but that just had to, I couldn't control the timing and my schedule. They didn't quite align perfectly the way I would have liked, but I wanted to get you guys this feedback. So it's much appreciated. Remember, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please make sure you do so. If you found this content helpful, make sure you smash that like button and we will catch you on the next episode.